Hi, this is Akshay Sura from Konobos. Today we'll be talking about content modeling. Content modeling is uh, pretty subjective. It's basically a way for you to define your content types so that you may store your data in reusable format. Um, it's pretty subjective because based on the experience you have doing the content modeling, architecting other systems, as well as the needs of the content authors, as well as the customer, no two members can create the same uh, content model. It'll be slightly different. Um, some might be too complicated. Some might be too simple. The, the goal is to find the right balance in setting up the content type so it's not too difficult uh, for the people who are entering and working with the content. At the same time, the information is set in the right way so it's very reusable in the different systems your organization uses. So content types almost like uh, imagine a printing printing press you're trying to print uh, pamphlets so you build a blueprint to print the pamphlet which is the content type and each time you press it against the paper to create a pamphlet the pamphlet itself is a content item so you have your content types which define what exactly is going to go into your content item so for instance here in the sample project we have a coffee content type and in here, basically, you can add guidelines as to how this can be used. But as you can see, we're talking about a product name, what's its price, uh, give an image, short, long description. You see a couple of these items uh, called taxonomy, which we will get into shortly in, in, a, in an upcoming video. But you have basically attributes which form what you're calling a coffee content type. So each time we use this, content type to create a coffee item we are defining hey this is dark roast coffee this is uh, coffee from india this is coffee from south america so you're creating different content items so content types themselves uh, are defined uh, so that you can create content items with them you can um, add additional attributes to them so you can group them using content groups or you can have them in one long list having them in a long list makes it kind of difficult for you to use uh, the content types because it's pretty lengthy you it just gets cumbersome the good way is for you to split those up into content groups another thing to notice is you see content type snippet over here and we will be talking about that in an, in an upcoming video as well. So for this specific content type, if we used that specific content type, we can create different coffees. So for instance, over here, you can see the, the Brazilian coffee, the Colombian coffee and the Kenya coffee. If I go into one of them, what you can see is whatever we defined as the attributes of the coffee are going to be here, we are actually specifying the value for it uh, value as in what is the product name what is the price the actual image and the different attributes which constitute uh, it being a coffee and then from a metadata perspective you saw the snippet but here the snippet actually gets added in as part of the content item and it'll become more apparent once we start using the system and i can explain to you linked items as well as content snippets but Basically, we can specify the metadata for it, and this forms one coffee. Same with uh, the other coffee items. We take a content type, create a content item of the type coffee, and we're able to specify different attributes for this specific coffee. I hope this was useful to you. Thank you again.